Welcome back. In this module we're going to talk about flow, which is in my opinion the most interesting aspect of lean. This is something that many lean experts or experienced lean practitioners still don't quite fully understand, as it is extremely complex. I'll use this module to try and simplify things and condense the information as much as possible. This will be quite a practical learning, so please grab yourself a pen and paper and write down things as we go along. Producing in large batches makes perfect logical sense. Surely by focusing on doing just one highly repetitive motion again and again will be faster than doing the process from start to end in one go. When I was younger I worked in the delivery department of an office. My job was to print and send letters to customers. I needed to finish 200 letters each day, and as a person who likes to push myself, I would set myself the target of finishing all 200 letters by 3pm so I could leave early. In order to save time, I would print letters off in batches of 200, I would sort all 200 letters, then fold all 200 letters, place all 200 letters in envelopes and finally frank them all. As I worked harder and harder, I found myself getting marginally quicker, being able to finish at 2.30 if I worked really fast, until one day I discovered a much more efficient way. Instead of working in large batches, I decided to complete each letter one at a time from start to finish. I would still print the letters in a batch of 200, but would only pick up one at a time from the tray. By working through the entire process one at a time, not in a batch, I was able to finish all my work by midday. How was this possible? Surely I must be missing something. The truth is, when working in large batches, a large part of the time is spent picking up and putting down, sorting, stacking and organising the piles of part complete letters. When you work through them one piece at a time, from start to end, the letter and envelope never leave your hand and you never waste any time picking up the letter or putting it down. Now I know this is hard to believe, when I first started doing it, I couldn't believe I'd been working in batches for so long, and wasn't aware of this. Everything I'd learned at school about Adam Smith and the division of labour made me think that by doing big batches of the same type of work, I'd become more efficient. This just wasn't the case. I also found there were lots more benefits by working doing one at a time. The only benefit wasn't just speed, since I was working each letter from start to finish, in one go, if I was suddenly needed elsewhere to do another job, I could easily finish the letter I was working on and quickly change, without leaving the huge mess of 200 partially completed letters in piles all over the place. More importantly, I was able to send the letters much earlier. I was able to send the first batch of 50 out by 10 o'clock the next 50 at 11 o'clock, the next 50 at 12, and so on. This meant they could get onto the earlier postage slot and would arrive at the customer faster. On top of that, when working one letter at a time, you pick up on any errors straight away, so you can rectify them easily. For example, if I folded 200 letters in a batch and then found they didn't fit into the envelope, I would have to redo the entire batch of 200 again. If I found the mistake when doing one at a time, I would spot the mistake straight away and prevent having to correct a batch of 200. This way of working, where products move through all the processes, one piece at a time, is known as single piece or one piece flow. It is the opposite to working in batches, with large piles of stock between each process. Single piece flow should be the destination that lean companies aim for, gradually reducing their batch sizes towards this level. So let's summarise the five main benefits of small batch sizing and try and relate the envelope example into a more complex setting to help visualise how these benefits would look for an entire organisation, not just a single process. The first of the five benefits is by working in small batches you're faster and more efficient. It means you have less stock between each process, meaning processes can be put much closer together, thus saving transport time, improving communication and taking up less space. 
Secondly, small batches eliminate the need for complex transport and storage facilities, which cost a lot of money. For example, if I wasn't working with envelopes but was instead working with engines, these large piles of 200 stock would need forklift trucks and drivers to move them, huge warehouses and complex systems to manage the stock. While with one piece flow, products can be passed directly from one process to another, removing the entire cost associated with transport and storage of stock. The third benefit is to do with defects and error handling and can be split into three sub-benefits. The first is the speed of feedback. As you're now working in smaller batches, items move through the process faster and thus any defects noticed downstream will be picked up much faster. This means you can rectify the problem quicker and save having a build-up of defects. Secondly, if there is an error with the batch, resulting in the whole batch needing rework, the number of products to rework is much smaller with reduced batch sizes. This saves time and all the associated costs with rework. Lastly, once a defect has been found, finding the cause of the defect is much easier in small batch sizes because you can easily trace the item back to when, where and how it was produced, allowing you to find and rectify the root cause of the problem. While with large batch sizes, it's incredibly difficult to trace back a defective product to the root cause of the problem, as more time has passed since the error occurred. For example, if you have 200 engines in a warehouse and find that one is defective, you can't go back, check the machine settings and ask the operators what happened as the engine could have easily been produced days or even weeks ago. If it was single piece flow, you could much easier stop the production line, find the cause of the problem and solve it there and then. The fourth benefit with small batch sizes is flexibility. If you are producing in smaller batches, you have much more flexibility to match customer demand. For example, if a customer wants to order 30 items, but you produce in batches of 100, you either have to restrict the minimum order to 100 or risk end up having unwanted extra stock. If your batch size is smaller and you produce in batches of say 10, you have much more flexibility to produce exactly what the customer wants and don't have the related costs of holding stock. Lastly, the final main benefit of small batch sizes is lead time reduction. The lead time becomes much faster when you produce in smaller batches. Like with the envelope example, when working in single piece flow, the first letter was ready to send after only a couple of minutes, but with large batches, the first letter was only ready to send right at the end of the day. This is related to flow, something that we'll delve deeper into in a second, but let's first recap the five main benefits. Firstly is an increase in efficiency. Secondly is removing the need for expensive transport and storage. Thirdly is improved defect and error handling. The fourth benefit is flexibility to meet customer demand. And the fifth and final benefit is lead time reduction. We'll now discuss lead time reduction more by introducing the concept of flow. Flow, in my opinion, is the most eye-opening and impactful aspect of lean. It is also a topic that is often neglected or not truly appreciated. The word flow will be used frequently throughout the course, so let's first describe what flow is. Flow defines how an entity progresses through a system. An entity could be a patient in a hospital, a product in a factory, or a work order or email in a service environment. When a system is working well or having good flow, it moves steadily and predictably. Bad flow means the opposite, when an entity moves with a stop-start fashion. Every time there is a breakdown in the flow, chances of accumulating waste increase. By having consistent flow, you generate a much more reliable and fast delivery. Cast your mind back to Mura, unevenness. Flow and Mura are opposites. Reducing Mura increases your flow and reduces Muda. A good analogy is to think of a car on a motorway. Big traffic jams are caused by a lack of flow. If all cars travelled at the same speed, i.e. with good flow, 
then traffic jams wouldn't occur. The reason traffic jams are caused is the variation in speed and stop-start nature of driving. In order to visualise flow, think of it like putting a camera on the entity within your system, whether that be a product in a manufacturing environment or a car on the road. Only when they are progressing through the system are they flowing. Everything else is a hindrance to flow. If we think back about the definition of lean, to reduce waste, increase customer value and involve people, by improving flow you are both reducing waste, i.e. the cars are waiting less, and you are also increasing customer value because people arrive at their destination faster. There are two aspects to flow. One is consistency and variation, and the second is speed. Good flow should have little to no variation and a fast speed. Good flow would mean that no items are waiting in your system. They should either be in value-add activity or moving forward towards their next value-add activity. Reducing batch size is one of the most effective methods to improve this speed throughout your system and improve your flow. This is best understood with a simple example. I encourage you to recreate this example at home with your friends. It's very simple to do. And seeing the effects of batch sizes yourself will help reinforce the point. In this example, there are three operators with 10 coins. In our animation, we are using blue and red as the side of each coin. But you can try this at home with normal coins or anything that has two sides. Each operator needs to flip each coin once before it can be moved onto the next operator. They are sat in a line as if they are in a production line and will flip a coin from their incoming pile and then place it onto their outgoing pile. The one thing we will be changing is the batch size we will be using within the task. How many should the first operator flip before passing it onto the next operator? Would it be faster to try and flip 10? then pass all 10, or possibly 5 at a time. The animation estimates this process for batch sizes of both 10, 5 and 1, which is single piece flow, and observe the difference in results. Think of this like a normal set of processes that work in a line, moving from the left to the right and to the customer. For a batch size of 10, you can see that the first operator needs to flip all 10 coins before moving them onto the next process. This is how most companies work, batching work or products together before sending them to the next department. Now let's observe what happens with a batch size of 5. After all 5 coins have been flipped, they can then move on to the next process. Unlike the batch size of 10, which required all 10 to be flipped before they were moved on. Until all the coins have been flipped and reached the end customer. This represents every single customer order being fulfilled. Finally, let's see what happens with single piece flow. The coins move through the system much faster and there are no big pile ups of stock before each operator. This represents a system with really good flow. Now that we've seen the effects, let's compare them across two categories. The time taken for the customer to receive the first coin and the time taken to receive all 10 coins. This could be seen as 10 customer orders moving through the system. The first coin is received with single piece flow in only 7.5 seconds. The first coin is received with a batch size of 5 after 19.5 seconds and after 21 seconds the single piece flow has finished all of its coins. In other words, all customers have received their product. 
After 33 seconds, the batch size of 5 has completed all orders. And after 34.5 seconds, the batch size of 10 has received its first order. Lastly, after 48 seconds, the batch size of 10 has received its last coin, or last order. So let's recap on what we've seen there. How is it possible that with the same processing time, the time taken was so much faster with single piece flow? The answer is flow. If you watch the coin in single piece flow with a batch size of 1, it's able to continuously move through the system without any barriers to flow, like a build up of stock. In reality, this would equate to a reduced lead time and the ability to send the products to the customer much faster. Not only that, but because each coin moved through the system without any large piles of stock, the processes could be put much closer to each other, meaning the transport time between each process would be even faster, leading to an even quicker lead time which was not represented on this simulation. This simulation really goes to show the power of flow. By reducing batch size, you can slash lead times and achieve results much greater than with larger batch sizes. The eagle-eyed among you may put this down to the latter operators not working for the first part of the animation in the larger batch sizes. Now this is a good point, and waiting is one of the wastes we can avoid with smaller batch sizes and better flow. However, in this case, it's not the reason for the speed of the smaller batch size. To replicate that situation, let's look at the yellow coin representing a customer's order that is within the system. Notice how even with pre-loaded stock, the coin still reaches the customer in only 10.5 seconds and takes 22.5 with a batch size of 5 and 37.5 with a batch size of 10. This is because the coin does not have to wait in any queues, instead flowing straight through the system. This is the reason lead time can be hugely minimised by reducing batch sizes. I would also like to point out here the whip levels. As you now work in smaller batches, the size of whip is also reduced. In this case, we have shown the worst possible case for the single piece flow to help demonstrate how it is superior even when fully loaded in both the in and out section of each process. This reduction in whip inventory, one of the mooders, has all the benefits of inventory reduction, including less quality issues, taking up less valuable space, risk of damage or obsolescence, etc. It just goes to show, improving flow is so important. With this improvement in lead time, along with the benefits of small batch sizes mentioned earlier, it seems like single piece flow is a no-brainer. Unfortunately, in the real world there are barriers to flow that we need to consider. These barriers can be categorised as either tangible or intangible. Tangible barriers include distance, long setup times, batch oriented machines or poor maintenance. These barriers hinder single piece flow and prevent the benefits from being achieved. For example, if the distance between processes is long, then rather than sending items one at a time, it makes more economic sense to bunch them and send them as a group. That is why it's important to try and keep processes as close together as possible. Examples of intangible barriers to flow include unreliable deliveries, unreliable quality, or even a lack of faith or resistance to change. For example, if process times are unstable and have a large amount of variation, then extra parts will be held at each process to protect against these fluctuations. This build-up of stock will then act as a barrier to flow. Because flow is such a powerful aspect of Lean, many tools specifically target these tangible and intangible barriers as a means to move towards single-piece flow.